There are all kinds of fish with blue colors, right? Blue tangs, blue spotted angelfish, starky damselfish, even fish like the potter's angelfish or the mandarin gobies have some blue in them. But are these fish actually blue? Well, it depends on how exactly you define blue. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and this video is all about how fish and other plants and animals get their color, specifically blue color. Blue is a special case amongst animals. There really aren't that many blue things in nature. Try to think of a blue flower. And certainly, if you're really looking for a blue pigment, it's even more rare. In fact, of all the fish that we know about, only the blue mandarin goby, also called the red or the green or the psychedelic mandarin, makes a blue pigment. That's not to say that there's no other species in the ocean that make blue pigment, but no other fish that we know of can do it. So, what about all the other blue things that you're thinking of? What about the fish I mentioned at the start of this video? The blue ringed octopus. These things are blue, right? Well, all of those things are using trickery and reflection to appear blue. This is something called structural color rather than a pigment based color. First, it'll be helpful to know that white light, like what I'm filming this video under and what you're watching the video under, is actually a mix of all different colors. And that color of light is really dependent on the wavelength that the light actually is. That's what sets its color. A pigment is simply a chemical that absorbs some wavelengths and only reflects certain wavelengths. So, you know, white light comes in, red light comes out, red pigment. Because only some of the wavelengths are reflected back off the pigment, we can see those colors directly uh, without the other colors mixed in, which were absorbed by the pigment. And a pigment-based color is going to be the same color no matter what light you look at it in or what angle you look at it from. Structural color, on the other hand, is created by the interaction of microscopic structures that change the light being reflected back to us. These tiny little grooves or sometimes layers interfere with the light as it's being reflected and they cause that interference and a whole different color to show up because the wavelength actually gets shifted. and Peacock feathers like this one, well, they're actually brown, although you're seeing a lot of color, right? They've actually got melanin in them, just like our skin. And because of the microscopic structure that is in them, the interference causes them to appear blue, green, and all those other colors that we see in between them. These structures are tiny. There could be only tens or a couple hundred nanometers in size. And a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. That's super tiny. In fact, these structures are tiny enough to interact with and change the wavelength of light itself. The distance from one peak to another defines the wavelength and therefore the color of the light. In the case of blue light, that's going to be around 490 to 450 nanometers between those peaks in the wave. So the exact placement of these tiny structures is going to decide the final color that we see. And depending on their spacing, we might see red, green, blue, or in the case of iridescent things, the final color you might see could just depend on the angle that you're looking at it from and what's getting reflected from it at that point. This is why a lot of blue fish appear iridescent. The mechanism behind iridescence is very closely related to the one that produces just structural color in general, although for iridescence, there's multiple layers of it. In this case though, it's almost always these like semi-transparent layers of cells that are going to reflect different lights back up from both the top of them and sometimes also the bottom layer. And that causes the reflected light to be just out of sync. And when the physics and the interference in these wavelengths line up just right, you'll see an iridescent flash of color. You can see the structure that I'm talking about very well in this photo of Mother of Pearl. That's just the inside layer found in some mollusk shells. See how there's all these tiny little layers? Well, each of these layers in Mother of Pearl reflects back some light from both its top and bottom. And because there's so many layers, we see that shimmering iridescent color instead of whatever the boring brownish cream color the shell would otherwise be. Lots of fish and other animals do similar things and even some minerals like opal do, although maybe without so many layers. I thought it was really crazy that there's only one blue fish that has blue pigment. Who would have guessed? I couldn't believe it. We have so many fish that look blue, but it's all just tricks. It's all just structural color. Nature is incredible. I hope you enjoyed this brief intro to color in nature and in our reef fish. Like any scientific topic, 
There is so much more detail that you can get into with color, wavelengths, the interaction between wavelengths. So dive in. You never know when you're going to learn something amazing. And, you know, science like this could just blow your mind. Until then, enjoy the world around you. Be kind to each other. Stay safe. Don't forget to subscribe and have an amazing day. Bye.